Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I mentioned at the beginning that our, my creed, my personal creed and our ministry creed is that the most radical pursuit you can have in life is to abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And think about that. God is pretty wild. I mean, I love to watch those uh, astronomy shows, those physics shows uh, that show the universe, you know, it, in its early stages and, and as it is today, the, the explosions that continue to go on out there, the black holes, um, uh, powerful, powerful forces at work, and then uh, just just going out into the wild and uh, and surfing and uh, and and Cindy and I this summer we went up into Glacier Park and down into Yellowstone and we got into the wild and it is wild. Uh, you don't mess with a moose. You don't mess with bear. You, we saw. We basically saw everything we wanted to see. Uh, uh, we said there are some things we want to see from inside the car, and some things we want to see while we're out hiking. The only thing we didn't see uh, is a mountain lion. But we were out in the wild uh, this this summer, and we're with a, fr- a friend of ours, an adventure guide. We call we call our guests here adventure guides. Michael Agrippina just got back from the wild uh, of the Tetons, and he and he spent a month here in Hawaii. So, Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Bear. It's an honor to be here. Really happy to be talking with you today. Yeah, you've been a great help to me. We'll talk about that a little bit a little bit later in the show, but you were in Hawaii for a month. What kind of uh, adventure did you have while you were here? I had a great month in paradise in Hawaii. I spent my first two weeks there working at a surf camp up on the North Shore. So I got to do a lot of time in the ocean, a lot of hiking and exploring, swam with the dolphins, all kinds of good Hawaii adventures. And then the second half of the month, I got to spend with you, Bear. Um, so working on the project that we'll talk through later, um, with also lots of time for surfing, for hiking, for checking out all that Waikiki and the island has to offer. So I'm very grateful for the experience and the uh, getting to learn about the spirit of aloha firsthand. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we were out surfing. Cindy and I were tandem surfing. And uh, we looked down the line, and here's Michael coming down. You, you're a good surfer. You're, you, were, you weren't like one of those straight-ahead surfers. You were coming down the line. You know, you had a great wave. So what, That was what, a lot of fun. You're good in the wild. to look up and see you. Yeah, you're in the wild. And when you're, when you're, when you're in water, period, you're already in harm's way, right? Because we're, you know, we don't, we, we have to be able, you have to swim and float when you're in the water. What was your, what was your sweetest experience surfing while you were out here? I think it was on Waikiki when I when I was staying with you and I really got to surf consistently going every day or two um, just get was able to catch some really great waves and just be in that moment of surrendering you know when you're surfing you can't do it on your own right you need the wave to take you so I love how you connect that to the way life is with God right God is the one who powers us all we can do is ride the wave so I had a couple of those moments when I'm out there on the surf the sun is setting it's you're in paradise and uh, it's a special feeling. And you experienced aloha out there. Try to explain to people what aloha is. Yes, so I had heard about this and the very distinctive culture of Hawaii, it really impressed me. Uh, The the spirit of the people and the way that you you could feel that throughout the entire island. And it's hard to describe. I would say people tend to be very friendly and open, but beyond that, you can tell that there's a great sense of hospitality where they know that they have something special and they want you to experience that as well. So I'm really grateful for the, the many Hawaiians that I was able to meet and interact with and, and feel that love for the islands as they pass that on to me as a tourist. But you know, it's interesting, when I used to first come to the islands back in the 80s, I don't think the Hawaiians really understand how unique they, they are because there's two things that I noticed. They're very powerful people. When I go to the mainland, I'm probably one of the better guys that in better shape than most. In Hawaii, no, you know, because everybody's uh, lives in the water. The the men my age, they they're all surfing, they're all super active, and and being in the water when it's nice and playful is one thing. But when there's bigger surf, um, it's almost like paddling out in that into that danger uh, and playing with it kind of imparts a certain power or we say in Hawaii mana 
and also manao, which means uh, wisdom. You you learn about you learn wave savvy, and you learn how to handle yourself in big surf, and you learn and you learn how to, um, and, and and you and and that wave almost seems to infuse you with its own energy and power. After you've surfed uh, waves, big waves, or uh, often enough, you have a certain mana. You're like. Dude, it's not like you're invincible, but you know you've been out there, you've cut, you've gone beyond the norm, you've gone into the wild, and you've been tested, and you know how to handle yourself. And the other thing about the Hawaiian people is the aloha. Uh, aloha, ha means breath. Aloha means to give breath. And I often wonder, why is there so much love in the islands? And I begin to realize so many people on the you know we barter for each other's affections uh we we don't really love people we i i'll love you but will you love me back type of thing it's like kind of more of an exchange where um people with aloha and people that have experienced the power and the love of the lord right i'm using this as a as an allegory um to love means you have to come from a place of power it's it, to love to, to be able to really love means you have to be a powerful person not a weak person a powerful person and, and thomas aquinas said that love is willing the true good for the other that's a big deal and St. john ball too said um love is self-donation so willing the true good for the other and self-donation and i think that's the ha that's the aloha that we experience here in the islands but did you have any wipeouts or anything like that Absolutely, yeah. Oh, well, I had my here, the, outs, got in the washing machine a couple of times. Um, I didn't realize like how tough we are of Hawaiians. You see people doing like barefoot hikes and walking on the hot sand, like no problem. So I definitely had to, there was a learning curve. I had to toughen up a little bit, but it was all part of the process. It, it is interesting how even a smaller wave in Hawaii has some juice to it. You know, you get, it really does. It is and, I mean, we're, we're both large guys, but I got caught by surprise a couple of times by these waves. It's like you say, never turn your back to the ocean. You learn that lesson pretty quick out there. Yeah, that's the first lesson my dad taught me was never turn your back on the, on the ocean. It'll surprise you. And that's basically our lesson from the Lord. Don't turn your back on the Lord. You know, the Lord, the Lord says when, you, when he sees you in heaven, he doesn't say, go away, you never knew me. He, the words he uses, depart, and, depart from me, I never knew you. So when we turn our back on, on, the, on the ocean, it's a dangerous thing. Much more dangerous to think that God's just an optional extra, you know, that we can tack on to the rest of our lives and, and ignore him. He's wild, and he's, and he's to Absolutely. be feared. Yeah. Yes. No, I love what you said about aloha, too, connecting that to love, that we're not called to be passive or weak, right? To truly love, we're called to be strong and dangerous men, and then to use that strength to channel it for something good, for the good of others, the service of others. So the Hawaiians do a great job of connecting that because they are clearly strong and they possess a great power, yet they channel that with respect and love for others. So I think it's a great connection. I just love it when you're in Hawaii, you know, like I was out, out yesterday golfing and came up on, on three, of the, three of the Hawaiians were golfing together. And it's like my brother. They call you brother. They pro call you brother. Or if you're a little bit older, they call you uncle, right? Or if you're the same age, they call you cousins. Um, but there's really, a, there's really a sense among the men, my wife says, that it's very unique that these are men. And then there's, there's a manly, uh, there's a, you, 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 you see the men bonding together. There's a, there's a, there's a real bonding. And it's probably, not, it's probably because uh, there's just that tradition of a manly bonding but they're 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 fishing together throwing net together surfing together talking story about the water together there's a there's something that they're involved with together not sitting around watching tv and or, or at a bar talking about politics <clears throat> they're engaged in doing something and helping each other there's a saying when you paddle in a canoe ho -oh -le, paddle hard together you know to catch that wave so we're talking with michael uh, Agrippina, who came out and helped us this summer as an intern, and uh, we'll be right back. We're gonna we're gonna tr see what our best we can do to embarrass him, find out a little bit about the truth about Michael Agrippina. Everyone wants to know. Everyone's asking questions, and uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at DeepAdventure.com. 
go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have a really unique uh, show today because uh, a, a young man, Michael Agrippina, recent uh, MBA graduate, um, uh, came out and helped us for a couple weeks to start working on what we're calling the School of Manliness. And we can't really talk about it too much, but it's basically just something where we're going to, uh, we have Bear's Man Cave, and it's just going to be something that's an add-on to that where people can go deeper in their walk by uh, engaging with our School of Manliness. So uh, we have Michael Agrippina here. So Michael, where did you, where, so where are you from and where what's your history as far as your walk with the Lord and, and where did you go to school? Because right now I know you're just you launched your career this week with Chick Fil A, right? Yes, sir. In sure, there. I'm happy to give a little background for you. So I was born in New York, moved down to a, the Atlanta, Georgia area when I was about two years old with my family. I'm one of four siblings with two loving parents. Um, really blessed to be in a strong Catholic family, and to attend a great Catholic school in Atlanta, uh, Holy Spirit Prep. So I went to high school there. Loved school, loved sports. I was very involved and then went to college in Virginia at Washington and Lee University. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You were very involved in sports. What did you do there? A little bit of everything. Basketball and track and field were my best two sports. But when you went so on to I, college, you... Yeah, I kept competing in college. Um, track and field was my sport there. I threw everything I could. Javelin was my best thing. So throwing the so you spear mean, as far as I could. What do you mean you threw? What did you throw? I threw shot put, discus, hammer, weight... Javelin was my favorite. It goes the furthest, so that's a lot of fun. Did you ever almost hit anybody? A couple close calls in practice. Actually, <laughs> as a coach, it was worse. So later in my career, when I was coaching track in Florida, we had a kid who put a javelin right through his foot. So thankfully, that wasn't me, and he made it for recovery. But, yeah, you got to be careful out he there. He did it to himself? He did it to himself. You got you to gotta keep your head on a swivel. Hold on. Let me, let me, make a, let me write this down. Note to self. When throwing a javelin, do not stick it in your foot. Yes, okay, good. I've got you, that Aaron. down. We need I'm gonna, you to coach these kids. I'm going to add that to my one of my rules of manliness. Do not rule. throw a javelin in your own foot. So you're not admitting to it yourself. This kid wasn't you. Wasn't you would me. never do that. Absolutely not. I have all ten toes intact. Well, what what you know? It's interesting. Track and field is an interesting thing because it's you're a team and yet it's a, it's individual. Uh, thing you know it's not like a football team or a basketball when you played basketball um you're kind of like on an island out there when it's your time to perform what, what was that like it's it's it is an interesting dynamic i love team sports but there's also something about trying to beat yourself and continually pushing your own limit and then we had our own brotherhood amongst the throwers uh who would push each other in practice help each other out and cheer each other on and our coach would always tell us everything you throw is a weapon so there's something special about that, about the kind of warrior mindset of going out there, a sport that's been done for centuries, and you're trying to, to pursue greatness. And it's history. Every one of those things has its history as originally being a weapon. That's cool. And so much of the javelin, you know, is its, it's strength, of course, but there's technique involved, too. Can you show us, compare that to, what, to the, your walk with the Lord? Lessons learned from that and your walk with the Lord. Absolutely. Yeah, I learned a lot from sports, and I think that it translates in a beautiful way. That's part of why I love to coach now. I think it just helps you learn how to pursue excellence in any any field, mm. right? And this applies to prayer as well. You oftentimes will, will hear a kid say, like, I want to be a starter on the team, or I want to be good at basketball. And that's an outcome. And I always encourage my athletes to focus, rather than focus just on the outcome, like the spiritual parallel might be, I want to be holy. 
it's very ambiguous and vague. And I encourage people instead to talk about your inputs, right? So I'm gonna take a hundred shots a day. I'm going to run sprints. I'm going to do my push-ups, right? So physically you can learn that if I do these inputs that are completely under my control, I can reach this outcome that I have set for myself. And I've, I've seen the same structure apply in my spiritual walk, where when I really drill down and put myself on a spiritual training plan of I'm gonna pray for this long every day, I'm going to make these fasting sacrifices. I'm going to commit to this brotherhood, this men's group that will help lift me up and encourage me. Taking those steps have really helped me get closer to where I want to be with God. So I think that parallel from athletics has served me very well. Yeah, it's true. Uh, you know, when I was going for my world titles, I know again and again my coach, and not most people don't have a coach in surfing, but I did because I knew I needed help. He would say, control what you can control. And so what can we control? I can control that I get up a half hour early to pray. You know, I can control, um, there's different elements that, that I, can, um, I can choose to do, and then the rest is up to God. It was like, I, I love the, this one song I used to hear, keep doing your best, pray that it's blessed, and God will take care of the rest. But we have to have that daily plan of action. The whole word, um, disciple comes from the word discipline right what kind of disciplines do you think uh do you do you yourself use or would you recommend for especially for young men in in their in their spiritual first in their prayer life and then in the rest of their walk with god i think discipline is key and the example that you gave of getting up early i think is a really important start you hear a lot of great leaders talk about doing little things like making your bed right getting up early being places on time committing to these small actions that will multiply and make a large impact. So for me, the things that made the biggest difference were committing to a certain amount of time of prayer per day, 20 or 30 minutes, signing up for an hour of adoration, where, you know, once it's on your calendar, it's a lot harder to not do it. Oh. When you put yourself in that place where, you know, you have committed to something, same thing with men's group. Okay, every Tuesday night, I go here. Every Thursday morning, I go to this holy hour. So the more things that you can commit to, the same way that you might treat a business meeting or a fitness class, making your spiritual life something that you schedule and prioritize, to me, that helped me instill discipline in that part of my life. You know, I, had a, I was training, um, I, I teaching someone how to play, how, how to surf. He was a Hall of Fame f uh, fullback with the Kansas City Chiefs. They called him the Nigerian Nightmare. He was just big. <laughs> and he was retired for several years. And I asked, uh, Christian Okoya is his name, and I asked him, well, how do you stay in such good shape? And he goes, because every morning I have an appointment with myself at the gym in his house, you know, I, I, but, but I have that appointment. And everyone knows, don't bother to try to ask me to do something with you during that hour, because that's my hour at the gym. I was interviewing Matthew Leonard earlier today, and I know Matthew Leonard. He's from thescienceofsainthood.com. I know with Matthew, if I say, can w we schedule a time to talk, I know that that's built around the time that he's going to go to Mass every day. He has a certain time he goes to Mass every day. And I know there's about an hour and a half there uh, that he's not going to be available. I know that about him. And Jeff Caven says that you can tell where your heart is by the rhythm of your life. And Father Larry says, no Bible, no breakfast, no Bible, no bed, right? So there's got to be that discipline. Like in my house here, every, you know, uh, I have a desk with my for my CPA firm over there I have the media center over here but in between those two desks there's a chair and it's only for one thing it's my prayer chair right next to it is my liturgy of the hour and what I'm reading right now a commentary on Genesis by the early church fathers um, that's my reading stack that's my prayer that's my place of prayer of course the rosary is usually prayed with my, my wife and I when we walk together and so and in the morning when she gets up I know I'm going to get up first thing. The first thing I do is turn on the cup on the coffee. And before it's brewed, I'm sitting in my prayer chair. But I know the next thing after that, when my wife gets up, uh, we will, after she's had her second cup of coffee, <laughs> then we'll sit and we'll do part of the Magnificat together. So there's a discipline, there's a plan. And that kind of speaks a little bit to what we were talking about when you were out. We started working on kind of like the behind the wall um, uh elements to the ministry which is the school of manliness and setting specific goals and measurable goals when we come back we'll, we'll talk we'll, we're going to talk about the school of manliness michael agrippina you're where are you what where are you right now by the way 
I'm in Atlanta, Georgia right now, the day before I start my Chick-fil-A journey on the road. Yeah, so you've been in training for one week? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, we got to pray for him. He's a young man uh, that has aspirations that I think are God-given uh, in his career, and he's he's launching it this week. So, Michael Agrippina, we'll be right back with more. Oh, but I want to remind everybody, uh, speaking of which, uh, to go go to deepadventure.com, sign up for our free newsletter. You'll get to see what Michael's a good-looking guy. You know, I mean, it's quite a contrast between him and I when you watch on the video ah, screen. There. So, I mean, he's good looking. I'm great looking. But uh, it's basically uh, it's basically, though, uh, you're listening. You may be listening on EWTN. But if you go to our website, deepadventure.com and subscribe to our newsletter, you get this video uh, in the email a video version of a YouTube version of it before it even airs on EWTN. And by the way, if you become a Patreon donor, you receive this two months before it even airs on EWTN because we record these shows. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men. Yes. We mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bears Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. And I want to invite the men out there. I want to invite the women to, in, to encourage their men also to join Bear's Man Cave. Uh, people that become members are, are just amazed at the impact it has on their personal journey. Sometimes, you know, one of the biggest things about men is they're, they don't really know how alone they are or how lonely they are. <clears throat> they may have friends, but they can't get real with them. You know, they work, especially people at work or things like that. So in Bear's Man Cave, there used to be a, there's a, there's a, a, a in the Old Testament, there, there was a, a group they called the prophets, the school of the prophets. That's what Bear's Man Cave is. It's a school of manliness. Uh, it's also like the cave of Adullam where, where, where David had this band of misfits that kind of gathered under this cave when he was on the run from King Saul. And God formed them, and they formed each other into the mighty men of valor. That's what Bear's Man Cave is. You can go there, go to deepadventure.com and join, and then a whole new window of opportunity opens to you, including being mentored, uh, including having uh, um, access to some of the videos no one, other people wouldn't have access to unless you're a member. And twice a month, we do a Zoom video chat, so we get to talk story with each other. And you meet like-minded like men from all over the world, and you realize... We're all kind of knuckle draggers. We're all kind of misfits. We're all bozos on the same bus, and we're not there to impress each other. We're there to, to get real and to help each other. So go to, go to deepadventure.com and join the man cave. Hey, we got Michael Agrippina with us. So, Michael, you recently, you, you were saying uh, uh, you threw javelin and never killed anybody with it, but one of your guys you coached almost killed himself but shot through it at his own <laughs> foot but uh but then after that after call it you were beginning to share your, your personal journey yes so let me catch you up then so after college i had accepted an offer to work at deloitte consulting where i used to work background at deloitte yeah so i had accepted an offer there but it didn't start until january i graduated in may so that left me with about a six month gap which was really a blessing in disguise I was able to get a summer internship in Atlanta at Coca-Cola, which was an awesome opportunity. Got to write for the Coke's magazine. And then in the fall, I went to Italy and I taught English there and lived with a host family in Turin, Italy, which was mm. a beautiful experience getting to travel throughout Europe and see the culture and also getting to test drive out teaching, which I always felt a passion for, but I didn't really know if I considered as a career or not. So it was a good way for me to test that out. Well, you have, you have a teaching gift, Michael. 
and uh, I want to spring this on you. I mean, you, you, God's given you, you're a teacher, just how you're going to be teaching. I'm, I want to invite you to consider once a month writing a two or three paragraph inspirational, uh, we call it Roar from the Man Cave, uh, that, that we can post to the Man Cave and also use in our weekly newsletter. I'm not going to st- hold you to your feet to the fire because I know how busy you are, but we'd really love to have your unique insight as a young man so we can post that in our in our weekly newsletter. Maybe you would consider doing that once a month. Absolutely, Barry. Yeah, that, that sounds like a great opportunity. I'd be honored to do that. Yeah, I mean, you de- definitely have a teaching gift, and God's going to develop that. But having said that, um, c- that wasn't to be your career path. That's more of a avocation for you. And so then what happened? So I went from Italy straight into the corporate world at Deloitte. Spent about two and a half years in consulting, traveling every week, working with clients across all different industries, learning a lot, working with very smart people, but not feeling like I had really connected to a purpose in my career. Mm. So at that two and a half year mark or so, I started searching for something deeper, right? We, we learn in, in the Catholic faith that we all have a vocation, a calling. Amen. And I didn't feel like I was getting that fulfillment that I really desired for my career. So it led me to look into teaching, which I always had a heart for teaching and coaching, and actually to a graduate program that many of my high school teachers had done. It's through the University of Notre Dame, and it's called the ACE program. It stands for Alliance for Catholic Education. So the ACE program was a two-year commitment where I would get my master's in education from Notre Dame, and I would teach at an under-resourced Catholic school during those two years. So I taught full-time during the year. Oh, wow, that's classes cool. classes during the summer. And yeah. uh, it was a great way to kickstart that. But but where did that go? What, what, tell us about your faith at that time. How, how, how did that go? I know you said you were raised by, in the Catholic family. Did you just continue to go deeper? Was there a time when things were derailed? Or did, were you just one of those fortunate people that kind of kept, kept going and growing? I definitely went through a stagnant phase. I would say through college and my Deloitte career, I didn't feel like I was growing in my faith. You know, I was going to mass on Sundays, but it was almost more out of a habit and tradition and out of a relationship with Christ. And that's also part of the discontentment I think I felt with my career was that I wasn't, not only was I not getting the satisfaction from my job, but I wasn't the man who I wanted to become. Mm. And there's a big difference between what you want out of your job when you're 22 and when you're 25. I had reached that point where I didn't just want a job that looked good on paper. I wanted something that I was proud of doing, that I felt like I was using the gifts that God had given me. So me joining the Notre Dame program and wanting to teach at a Catholic school was also following that desire to grow in my faith and to surround myself with people who could push me to do that. Well, you know, the, the thing about it, you said something, you didn't feel like yourself. And, I, and, and I've had three conversations, three, the last three interviews I've done, the same sort of topic came up that people said, I just didn't feel like myself. I don't feel like myself unless I'm spending that hour of adoration or that hour. I feel most like myself when I'm in prayer. Isn't that a powerful thing to it say? Is. And yes. you kind of I love to think of it. Go ahead. The best version of myself, right? Not just myself, but like who God made me to be. Yeah. Right. And I see that happening in, happening in your life. So, so now, though, I know we're not promoting Chick-fil-A, but you've entered the, the very unique and, uh, program to, be, to become part of their, their team. And this is your, you just ended your first week just now. Yes, this is a great capstone to week one, a good way to celebrate. But yes, after three years in the classroom, absolutely love what I was doing. Really felt like uh, walking with young people was something that energized me. Um, But as I learned more about Chick-fil-A as an organization, I felt like that would be an awesome outlet for me to use this along with my team and leadership skills. So I've recently joined their leadership development program. So for the next couple of years, I'll be on the road training in different restaurants. And my ultimate goal is to become a franchise operator of a Chick-fil-A restaurant. So we'll see if that's what God has in, the, in store. Well, that's for me. so cool, you know, because you, what I like about you is you're, you're, you're testing the water in different areas. Some of the things that you found are more of an avocation than a vocation, and but you're, but you're, you're moving forward. You're testing and you're moving forward and more and more narrowing, because the problem with so many people is they have so much talent and ability that they could do so many things. They have to narrow it and choose to do that one thing. And so that that's kind of the the place you are in your in your life right right now. Um, but you made this special effort to come out here to Hawaii, and uh, <clears throat> for a couple of weeks, and uh, and spend time with 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 our ministry. 
uh, tell, tell everybody what we worked on. Yeah, so I was so blessed to connect with you, Bear, and to have the opportunity to come out to Hawaii. Our time there was focused on building out the program for the School of Manliness, which you mentioned earlier. This is a program tailored towards men who have this desire to, to be more, to be holier, to be the man who God made them to be. And what Bear and I have really tried to do is to apply some of these same practices that we use to become better in our finances or in our fitness, right? We see all this energy going tracking and maintaining and managing and setting goals. And we wanna take those same strategies and apply them to our spiritual life and not do it in isolation, but do it in the context of a brotherhood. Iron sharpens iron. Other men who are going for the same thing as you who can lift you up. So the goal of our program is to provide you the tools that you need to be the man who God made you to be. You know, the, the, uh, the school of manliness in the Old Testament, you know, the prophets, um, they called themselves the school of prophets. And, Benedict, and, and Pope, Pope Benedict, St. Benedict, who I'm, I'm a Benedictine oblate, also said the rules that he wrote, wrote down were so, were so that it would be a school, like a school of, of, uh, uh, of, of, of manliness, basically, to become, more, to become more of what God wants you to be. And so we can use these same principles. I mean, like it was Habakkuk. One of my favorite scriptures is in Habakkuk where it says, write the vision down in letters big enough so the one that's running can read it while they're running. And so I've always been someone who's set goals. I don't just arbitrarily do them either. That's, that's prayerful spending time with the Lord and then feeling that little nudge and wondering if it's the Lord or if it's the pizza I ate last night, but trying to discern God's will. But in my house, you'll see notebooks, blue notebooks, and there are three ring binders with sleeves in the front and the back. And when I decide I'm going to do something, I print out a label with my label maker, like my new book I'm working on, The 12 Rules of Manliness. And then as I come across discovery, I'm doing discovery, I just print things out and, and stuff them in the front sleeve of that notebook. And then I begin to assimilate that process that and I began to write down very specific and measurable goals and goals that make me have to grow as a as as a, grow as a person to become those goals and then I pro and then I always have deadlines and metrics to measure those goals so that's kind of the school of manliness is just saying let's take these practical things that are out of the bible and let's apply them to our daily lives and in, in, in the pursuit of sainthood we'll be right back with Michael Agrippina and more of the Bear Wozniak adventure Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. And we want to invite you to uh, go to our website, click the, page, uh, click the button that says support. We really do need your support. Our ministry uh, kind of runs on your prayers and on your support. And you can become a Patreon donor. When you become a member of the Mama Bears or Bears Man Cave or, or give at a different level in Patreon, then you receive um, access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows, even before they, they air on EWTN. Uh, and you also have er early access to all of the radio shows and a lot of other uh, content that we provide for you. So, and, and you know, more, more than anything, if you love our ministry, support us. We really do rely on your, on your support, and we ask you please to help us. Our, we run at a deficit every, every month in, of thousands of dollars, and uh, frankly, that's money that, I, that I, I put into the ministry myself. So we would really love it if we could get more people to come alongside us and help because we have so much we want to do as far as growing and expanding the ministry. We have, we have uh, 
this new school of manliness that we're developing. And my guest, Michael Agrippina, came out here with me for a couple of weeks, and he worked on that. So share with us, if you can remember, what are some of the, maybe we won't uh, hold your feet to the fire on this, but what are some of the rules as a young man you live by? What, what, do you have a personal creed, by the way? That's a great question, Barrett. So I, this makes me think, as a teacher, I would start every year with a couple of overall mottos, themes, creeds that I wanted to live by and also to create a culture in my classroom. So that's what comes to mind. So I'll share those things with you if that works. Yeah, that's cool. So the first one I learned from a professor at Notre Dame, he told me that he would end every class by telling his students this, and it is, you are great, so go be great. And this harkens to the fact that every one of us is made by God in God's image and likeness. And that fact means that we are great, right? We're all made to be great. It's up to us to put that into action and to live up to that standard that God has set for us. So it's a reminder to myself and to my students, God created us to be great, right? We're not here to be average or mediocre. So I'm, I'm going to hold myself to that standard and I'm going to push you to also meet that standard. The next one is mistakes are expected and respected. So this was important for me to try to establish a growth mindset where when you make a mistake, that's not a reason to quit. That's part of progress, right? None of us are going to be perfect. Life doesn't move in this beautiful straight line up to the top. You're gonna to have ups and downs. You're going to face obstacles. One of the beautiful things of our faith is reconciliation and the ability to come back from sin, to receive that grace. But it's important to me to have that mindset of expecting mistakes to happen. And when they do, not letting that be the end of your story, but bouncing back and responding. And the last thing I share with my class is we can do hard things. And this is just an encouragement to push ourselves to be great and to set big goals and to chase after them hard. And whether that's on the court or in the classroom or in the pew, right? Don't set mediocre goals. Push yourself to be the best that you can possibly be. So those are some of the creeds that encourage me and get me fired up every day. You got to send that. You got to write, write that in those those blog posts you're going to give me. Those are excellent. Yeah, you know, my father was a is it was a deacon in the Catholic Church, but he was also a longtime um, professional speaker, and he spoke on subjects like this about goal setting and having a vision and having a direction. And people will talk to me and they'll say, "Man, you're doing so much stuff." But I go, "Well, no. They think I've got all this stuff going on. You know, like just going every which way. No, but everything I do." is like, uh, it's not like arrows going all different directions. What I write, when I go speak, when we do TV, when we do radio, whatever we do, it's all in a straight line for that one goal. My mission is to evangelize, you know? But I have specific goals and I have specific, what's the importance of having, what are the elements of a SMART goal? That's a great, great question, Bear. So we talk about SMART goals being goals that are specific, measurable, action-oriented. Um, what's the R here? <laughs> I forget. Uh, I don't have. I know but, the T is time-bound or right. timely. I'm blanking on the R. But the idea here is that we're not being vague or ambiguous, right? We're being very specific. We're giving ourselves a time frame which to achieve the goals. We're setting goals that are ambitious enough that they're going to push us and giving, giving ourselves that motivation to go after them. And the way I always think of it is, if you don't clearly set what your destination is, you'll never get there, right? So you talk about having this goal, this is your destination to evangelize, then the roadmap becomes clear and you can see your route, whether that takes you left or right or up or down, you're always pursuing that destination. So taking the time to be crystal clear about what your goal is, is very important if you wanna live a life of purpose and direction. Yeah, and, and setting, you know, it's, to me, it, it's, it's you look at where you are, and then where do I want to go? Like, okay, I want to pursue having a relationship with a young woman. Okay, well, what can I do now in the, when I don't even know who that woman is? What, what do I do now? Well, I can, I know women really dig on guys that, that, are, that have skills, you know, or that can provide and can protect and that are powerful. So how can I empower myself to prepare for that moment when I meet her so that when I meet her, you know, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm ready. And not to have anybody else in, in that parking spot, you know, that, that isn't the person that you know you're going to marry, you know, uh, ending that relationship if that's not the direction you're going to go. <clears throat> and, then, um, 
And then it's it's uh, praying for that person and fasting for that person now, even though you've never met them. What what do you say to the the young men out there? I see so I see a sort of a a spirit of timidity has fallen on the young men as far as um, that area of their lives. That's a great point, Bear, and I, I really enjoyed our conversations. One of the rules involved this idea of cherish your woman. And I'm a single guy, so I remember talking to Bear about how does this apply to me? And you reminding me, whether you're single or not, it's still your job to cherish your future wife. Um, and you just talked about what that looks like in a few different ways. But I think part of countering this timidity goes along with your overall purpose of reclaiming what true manliness is. We talked about the etymology of this word, uh, the word for virtue, right? Virtus, virtus maybe in Latin. And vir means man, right? So the core of virtue is being manly, right? It's having the courage to do the right thing. Um, so I think if we can reconnect these two concepts in, in culture today for our young men today, that being a man is being virtuous, right? Is having the courage, is taking the step, is pushing yourself. And the more we can integrate those ideas, I think the more we can defeat the timidity that we sometimes see. Well, let me ask you this question. I, I, I honestly, I feel like there's so much emphasis on the nice guy. You know, it's not the Nicene Creed anymore. It's the nice creed. You know, you got to be a nice guy. You can't be a good man. What's the difference between being a nice guy and a good man? There's a big difference. Nice is not a virtue right? We want to treat people with compassion. We want to have empathy. We want to care for others. And we see Jesus model that. But at the same time, we need to speak the truth and we need to uphold what's right. So the example that I love that models this from scripture is when Jesus stops the people from stoning the woman who has just been caught in adultery, right? Everyone is lined up. He starts to write in the sand and they all depart. And then he has this moment where he talks to this woman who's just been caught in this great sin. And he, he says to her, go in peace and no, right? And th those are the two different components that we need to remember, right? He wants her to live in peace, but yet he's not condoning what she did, right? So we can still react and respond with love while asserting and upholding the truth. And I think it's balancing those two things that will lead us to, to a more pure virtue. And we have to step into the fray. And it's so interesting when you do how God moves. When you see something that needs to be done. I mean, this is a small example. Yesterday here in Waikiki, there was a, a small group of, of street entertainers that decided they were going to open up right next to our condo in Waikiki. We're the only condo on the beach with their speakers blasting up in our, into, our, into our condo. So I knew that once they started that, they would continue to do it every night for hours. So I went down and I just, I, I, I waited and then I walked right up to the guy with the microphone while there was 100 people watching. And I just said, we really love you guys. We, we're big fans of yours. But what makes this place different is that this is a residence. All the other, the hotels, no one's there. They're out having fun. But this is a residence. And could you show us some aloha and, uh, and, and move to a different location? I, if I hadn't done that, and that, that took a certain boldness. I'm like, here I am. I'm walking into the middle of the circle. Now I'm talking to this, this, this guy's name is Eugene. And... Um, and he looked at me, and, and he kind of remembered me, and, and uh, he said, yeah, bro, we can move on. I go, yeah, that's aloha, because these are local people living here. And, but I could have just, I could have let that go forever and ever. So when, so when the enemy is, 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 is making noise with all this woke movement and all this other stuff, just step up in the middle of the crowd, just speak with alacrity because the Lord as a Catholic you, God will give you the words and you, you already know what to say and tell them you know this isn't th tell them the truth about the situation and w from a point of compassion and then one of them said you know we have the right to be here and I go I know you do we can he said we can be anywhere within this area and I go I know you do we do too so if you don't move then there's going to be 10 of us sitting right in the middle of your of your your entertainment this wasn't the leader of the group this this was someone else and then the leader said no bro no bro we'll leave you know we, we respect you you know and that's what we need we need to be able to speak the truth in love and i said bro that's so awesome every time we see you we're going to support you when we walk by and you're in and you're entertaining so that's where you can speak the truth in love you don't have to be arrogant you don't have to be in someone's face but be willing to speak the truth of love that's part of being a good man totally different than being a nice guy hey michael we already got to go dude Man, it flew by, Bear. It's been a pleasure. 
And you're packing your bags for where? For Columbia, South Carolina is the first stop, beautiful, so not too far. Beautiful, beautiful place. Well, have, uh, uh, we, we look forward to talking with you more on your adventure, and we look forward to having your posts in our week, in our once a month maybe you can do that for one of our newsletters. Just keep your, because you got to write. You got to keep doing the stuff. Absolutely. Bear, I really appreciate it. Great talking with you. I'm thankful for your uh, mentorship. And, and thankful for all, you, all you've meant for me and, 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 uh, and, and, and taking that wave that I thought was mine. But never mind. That's a different thing. Okay. <laughs> we'll, until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.